it's Compulsive Overreader again. Time for me to review the books I've read the last little while. I haven't done one of these since the end of summer, so I have to do September's and October's books all at once. And I have to apologize for the video quality of the parts where I'm at the bookstore because my flip video stopped working and I had to use my phone camera, which wasn't so great. But I did read a lot of great books the last two months, and I can't wait to tell you about them. So for young adult fiction this month, I was persuaded by my daughter, the lovely Emma, to read Veronica Roth's series Divergent and Insurgent, just in time to read the third volume, Allegiant, when it came out the other day. Um, dystopian young adult fiction, a little bit in the vein of The Hunger Games. There were things I really liked about them, some things I didn't think were done as well. Um, ending of the third one is a little controversial, and I think I'm going to let Emma, the expert, say more about these. What I really liked about the Divergent series was that it was one of the dystopian novels that seem so popular these days, which I really enjoy. And the ending of the last book in the trilogy, Allegiant, had a sort of a surprise, well not really a surprise ending, but an unexpected ending that you wouldn't see in most popular teen fiction books these days. Uh, Mother Daughter Me by Katie Hafner. Uh, good memoir about a middle-aged woman, her teenage daughter, and her aging mother trying to live together. I enjoyed certain things about it. I was kind of disappointed in the epilogue to discover that her mother wasn't happy with her writing and publishing the book, and I thought after all the effort she had put into the relationship in the book, maybe the relationship was more important than the book and she shouldn't have written it. That was just my thought, but you might disagree. It's interesting anyway. A few books that I read that I can't show you copies of because I don't either have a hard copy or wasn't able to find one at the bookstore, but My Bright Abyss by Christian Wyman, a poet meditating about returning to his faith in God in midlife as he faces a terminal illness. Very, very beautifully written book, one I read on the ebook, but I want to have a hard copy because it's got so many lovely words and phrases that I'd like to go back to. Uh, Away by Amy Bloom, fantastic historical fiction, riveting story of a Russian Jewish immigrant to the U.S. in the 1920s who goes on an incredible odyssey to try to reconnect with a piece of her past. I've been reading things that Jennifer Weiner wrote for quite a while, but I've been reading like articles and, and blog posts and things by her and not her books, uh, and I decided I should finally pick them up. Really good uh, mainstream commercial fiction fun and readable. I like Good in Bed. I love the sequel, Certain Girls. Probably because in Certain Girls, the same character is middle-aged and raising a teenage daughter, so I was more able to relate to it. There's a lot of sad bits in this too, though. I almost cried a bit, but very good stuff. Prince of Darkness was one of the series of um, Justin De Quincey Mysteries by Sharon K. Penman. It's actually been out for several years, but it was the only one in the series that I hadn't read, so I caught up on that series by reading uh, yet another adventure of the young knight Justin uh, in the service of Eleanor of Aquitaine. I've read quite a bit of Michael Palin's nonfiction as well as admiring his comedy, and this is the first of his novels I've read. I think it's only the second one he's written, The Truth. Um, sort of interesting story about a journalist uh, who's commissioned to write a biography of a famous sort of eco warrior, and the truth turns out to be more complicated than he thinks it's going to be. I enjoyed this one, it wasn't completely riveted, but I did enjoy it. Back in September, I also read Chasing Francis by Ian Morgan Crone, which is kind of a modern day parable about a mega church pastor who starts to question his faith and then kind of rediscovers it after he starts learning about the life and teachings of Francis of Assisi. Um, as a novel, I don't think it really stands alone, but if you understand what it's doing, it's a story that's attempting to teach uh, something that Crone believes the modern church really needs to learn about. Uh, from that perspective, I found it really interesting. Living in a Man's World by Bonita Joyner Shields uh, was a book about um, being a woman in Seventh-day Adventist ministry, pastoral ministry, and Bonita's had a lot of experience both there and in administration and had a lot of really interesting insights to share. Another book I read, a nonfiction book I read back in September, Barefoot Church, Serving the Least in a Consumer Culture by Brandon Hatmaker. Uh, Hatmaker's had a lot of experience with churches that attempt to, I guess, go outside the traditional religious box and serve those who are in most need in their communities. And as that's something that I have a real passion for, this book was not only interesting but really convicted me of, you know, wanting to be doing more in that area. Definitely the best historical fiction of the month and one of the best of the year, Elizabeth Gilbert's The Signature of All Things. Her fictional character is a woman botanist in 19th century America, and I, it was great. I was completely absorbed in it and really loved it. Very well written. 
This one, uh, in terms of description, kind of reminded me of Kate Atkinson's Life After Life, except instead of one woman living the same life over and over again, uh, this woman, Greta Wells, gets sent back in time to different versions of her own life. And the means for doing this is electroconvulsive therapy, which she's getting as a treatment for depression. Every time she gets a shock treatment, she wakes up in a different version of her own life in different time periods, and ultimately has to decide where she's going to stay. So it was kind of neat. My classic for September was in fact one that I was struggling with for much of the summer, The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy, which I have tried numerous times to read before. This time I'm proud to say I actually got through it. The best thing I can say, it's a book I'm glad to have read. Better to have it behind me. A very long slot, very digressive, uh, a few great moments. It's kind of like the infinite jest of 18th century literature, really. Um, so I'm just glad to be able to finally say that I have read Tristram Shandy. I did not read a classic novel in October because Tristram Shandy really pretty much destroyed me for classics and I needed to take a little break for a while so rather than picking up another sort of heavy 19th century tome I picked up but have not yet finished Dear Life by Alice Munro, her latest collection of short stories for which she won the Nobel Prize for Literature. I'm not normally a person who reads a lot of short stories. Obviously, if that's the genre you're reading, Alice Munro is the best there is. And I have been reading these a bit at a time, but haven't finished, so not ready to really review them yet. Also, the poetry's been going kind of slowly. After spending several months dipping into various poets in the Breakwater Book of Contemporary Newfoundland Poetry, I decided for a change, and because he just died, uh, to pick up Irish poet with Seamus Haney. Human Chain was the one I picked just because the library had a copy of it. Uh, so far I've enjoyed the ones I've read but I haven't got very far into it so there'll probably be more on that in November. So those are the books that I read in September and October of this year and I have lots more great reads lined up so look forward to another one of these in November. Uh, from my summer book reviews Bohista Nordica left a comment on my YouTube page and you are the winner of any one of the books I reviewed in September and October. You can get in touch with me if you see this video. Uh, my email address is on the screen or you can send me a message via YouTube and I will send you whichever one of those books you want. And for anyone watching this today, you can leave a comment on YouTube, you can like, you can share, you can favorite, post this on Twitter or Facebook, do anything to let the world know about these reviews, and I will pick one of you to win a copy of any one of the books I read in September and October. Next week I'll be back with a regular Writing Wednesday on Wednesday. See you then.